so Charles is um, he's using this avatar called Awisa, who is a Zulu warrior, and Kyoko is not using her normal avatar. Her normal avatar is basically her because she's her own avatar. She's because uh, the virtual reality and regular reality are the same. It's the same. So in this, she has an avatar called uh, Steampunk Girl because she's in disguise. And girl is spelled with two <laughs> R's. Uh, girl. All right. So Charles slash Awisa and Kyoko slash Steampunk Girl stood together on the foredeck of a wooden ship. A cloth air cylinder filled the space overhead. Houses and farms passed below. Awisa held Steampunk Girl's hand. Charles could feel, feel the touch of Kyoko's palm and grasp of her fingers all the way across Baltimore. They had rented an airship to take them to Club Elite, a huge structure that defied the laws of gravity and floated around with the clouds. Most Better World residents couldn't see it, nor knew it existed. But as a VIP with her own realm, Kyoko could visit whenever she wanted. Charles still hadn't revealed his outside identity to her, though Kyoko probably suspected. She'd been nice to him at the band house, but hadn't shown any signs of interest. He was underage and overweight. At least here, he had a chance. And Better World romances spilled outside all the time. Just had to be patient. So how are you going to find the admins, he said. They were alone except for the pilot and crew, all bots, and a hold full of vampires. She looked back at him. I have an idea. What's that? He asked. If they have God powers, we just have to get them to show off somehow. How do we do that? I've noticed hackers can be brilliant in one hand, she said, but suckers for sex, money, or technical challenges. He thought about it. She was probably dead on. So what's your plan then? I thought I'd go for the technical challenge. A scavenger hunt. Like my palace, Club Elite has one fixed teleport site, a pad at the air dock. So anyone who teleports from inside the club is likely to be a programmer. After the contest, Charles said, I'll send the vampires after their avatars. They'll take them over and I'll have access to their computers. Of course, you know we can only do this once, because the admins will go on a vendetta and destroy all, all the vampires, and they'll close the exploit. Cyber mercs will converge as soon as they figure out what's going on. And we should surprise our targets, she said. Strike them all at once. The airship slipped into a berth along others of its type, and everything from biplanes to flying saucers. Steampunk girl led him down a walkway toward a nine-story pyramid. A wide platform, held up by black columns, ringed the third floor. The walkway ended at a fancy-looking gate. Two bling-covered gorillas, just like the one at Swag Spears, stood in front, arms crossed and faces frowning. Steampunk girl gave them the entry code. The gorillas uncrossed their arms and stood aside. The gate swung open, and she strolled in. Elisa followed her into a giant room, vibrating to dance music. Smart-dressed people and half-animal creatures danced amidst pulsing lights. Kyoko seemed to know where she was going. Charles followed her into an elevator. She pressed the top button, and seconds later, it opened to a lounge. People sat at couches or at small tables, music quiet enough for conversation. Open sky blazed through glass walls. Steampunk girl sat at a table, joined her. She pulled out a piece of paper and a thick pen from her leather pouch and started a list. An orange, a pearl, a bottle of Giondu sake, the head of Alfredo Garcia. When she finished, she called over a server, a beefy man in black leather. She leaned toward him. Could we see the manager on duty? I have a fun idea for the club. What do you have, he said. A bot, and not even a smart one. Charles wondered why people even ordered drinks. You couldn't taste them, and they wouldn't get you drunk. Steampunk girl said, <laughs> Never mind. 
She walked over to the female bartender standing behind a long counter and repeated her question. What sort of fun idea, she asked. A scavenger hunt. Kyoko showed the bartender the list. Winner gets an airship and a slot in a system-wide contest with a million credit pool of prizes. A jewelry-covered Indian woman, midriff bear like steampunk girl, appeared next to the bartender. I'm Priyanka. I'm the manager. Steampunk girl. She bowed from the shoulders. Priyanka returned the bow and scanned the list. Who are you with? Chow Ji Mao Entertainment, out of Shanghai. We're prototyping a, guy, a game for Media Corp. Priyanka nodded. What do you think, Kyoko said. All you have to do is let me message everyone, and whoever's interested can meet me on the level three terrace. Priyanka ran a hand through her long hair. Sounds interesting. Give me your text and I'll send it for you. Access to the comm system must be restricted, Charles thought. He followed Steampunk Girl back to the elevator. The terrace was big, with lots of pools, tiki huts, and palm trees. Bikini-wearing honeys chatted with athletic-looking men in swimming trunks. Luisa followed Steampunk Girl onto a wooden performance stage in the center. One or two at a time, people and creatures gathered from other parts of the club. Steampunk Girl addressed the crowd, describing the scavenger hunt, list of items, and the prizes. Everyone will get a participation prize, she said, and we're throwing a party here, so be sure to come back. Good luck. Angels and demons flew off, followed by a guy with a rocket pack and a goofy-looking kid with a helicopter beanie. Other avatars disappeared, no doubt teleporting. The rest ran or walked for the exit, headed for the designated teleport pad or an aircraft. Those ones probably weren't bothering with. All right, so I'm going to stop there, and I'll pick it up uh, after some questions and